that it moved Japan's land eight feet. You want to give away land? I've got said I'll give away something. <laughs> Now, it's interesting because the death toll is now a minimum of 15,000. They said there's probably another additional 10,000 that still have not been accounted for. 309 billion dollars in damages. Now, if you think that's a coincidence, it just so happens that that happened after they did it on that exact same day. That's just a coincidence. Well, let me just tell you, by the time we get done with this tonight, you're going to see that God is not afraid to say stuff like this. I'm going to cut you in pieces even though the whole world comes against this country. God says, there's one thing you don't touch, and that's the apple of my eye. You, when you touch that apple of my eye, you are touching a very sensitive part to me. And the reason why is because God made a covenant. And it all starts back in the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, in which the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. He was in Iraq. He says, And I, I want you to leave from your kindred and from your father's house unto a what? A land that I will show thee. I will make thee, I, I'm sorry, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee. Now watch this. How many will think, well, yeah, God's a blesser, but that's not the only side. There's another side. Listen, there's another part, of, there's another side of this coin. If God is a blesser, everybody loves that. But, but he hasn't even taken a breath. He says, and, and curse him that curses thee. Now all you got to do is get your little strong stick cords out or your little Hebrew help and look up the word curse there. And it literally means I will bring divine punishment upon him that curses thee. I will bring divine punishment. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now let me just say, unlike the Quran, which commands Muslims to force the entire planet to submit to the control of Islam, that's what Islam means, it means submission, the Jewish Torah promises the children of Israel a modest and reasonable share of the land. Israel is a tiny nation encircled by their enemies. You can see the little red there. That's Israel. It's surrounded by 22 hostile Arab Islamic dictatorships, which is 640 times her size, 60 times her population, and it has all the oil. So why do these people want this little tiny speck? Okay? I mean, when you think about it, it's twice the size of the United States. You put two United States end on end, that's the size of these Arab countries, and the land of Israel is smaller than the state of New Jersey. And yet, Arabs want Israel to give up land. Does that sound a little weird to you? So why do the Arabs, propagandist organization, are always calling Israel, calling Israel the ex Ancientists. Think about it. And what it is, it's just a stinking lie is all it is. Israel actually only occupies one-sixth of one percent of the Arab land. When we're talking a minuscule amount of property. It's crazy. I mean, it's just, I mean, you can literally drive all over Israel in a day, several times. <laughs> but even that is too much to the Arabs. Why is Israel to blame for the political resentment of 22 Arab countries, all of whom are dedicated to the total annihilation of Israel? And how can the 13 million Jews in the world be blamed for the problems of the third 320 million Arabs who have brotherly ties to 1.4 billion Muslims worldwide? Well, the reason is very simple, saints. I want you to look up here. They deny Israel has the right to exist. 
And see, this is where there's a fight. Mm -hmm. Because whether people understand it or not, it is so clearly a fight that is on a spiritual level. It's undeniable. You know, remember the scripture says that we're not fighting flesh and blood yeah, against yeah. spiritual principalities and powers and all that kind of stuff. See, no matter how many land concessions that the Israelis make, it will never be enough for the Arabs because it's not about the land, folks. It's about God. And this is where you need to understand where we're going with this tonight. God made a covenant with Abraham over the land. And if the devil can prove God is a liar, can't keep his promises, etc., etc., then he's made his point, thereby proving God to be invalid. Now, why this is so important is because in just what is it? This is uh, May, so June, July, August, September. Four months from now, uh, one of the most probably scariest things is about ready to take place. Uh, the, U the UN is getting ready to uh, make a declaration on the Palestinian state, and they're already asking for a no-fly zone over Israel, which, folks, to be honest with you, every nation of the world is coming against this little place. They've got their target aimed. And the UN has never really been a friend of Israel. That's a whole other message in and of itself. I won't take time to get into that. But I want you to listen to what was said by the Palestinian chief negotiator. This was back last month. And he says, we want to generate pressure on Israel to make it feel isolated and help it understand that there can be no talks without a stop to settlements. It's all about them being able to build and have the privilege to be able to live in their country. Without that, our goal is the membership in the United Nations General Assembly in September. Now, they're pushing for something very interesting. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to New York. And if you have, you have probably seen the UN building. It's uh, quite an amazing building. Now, in front of it is this very notable uh, piece of art. It is a man who is uh, taking a huge mallet. He's beating a sword into a plowshare. Now, underneath where he stands in the, in the granite or marble, whatever that is, is the actual passage out of the book of Isaiah. Now, what's so interesting about it is the way that it's read here, it just is not what it says. Now, I find this kind of interesting. Here, they're quoting a Jewish prophet. <laughs> they're saying that Jews don't have any right to this. this. Isaiah was in Israel a long time before anybody even heard of Mohammed. He was in Jerusalem before there was ever such thing as Islam. Of course, Islam says that there was no such thing as Jerusalem and, and it was all, all fake and all etc. etc. But you know, it's interesting when they, they carved this right at the United Nations. This is nuts. If you look at the passage, it's found in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, starting verse 2. But if you notice what it says here, I don't know if you guys can see that. But it says right here, it says, they shall beat their swords into plowshares, etc., etc. Okay? Well, to be honest with you, <clears throat> that is the, the favorite tactic of cults. They just take a portion of the scripture and they make it say what they want it to say. Now, this is classic because what this is, this is right in the middle of a passage that proves that God is going to be very serious about Israel and about Jerusalem. Let me just read to you the passage. It says, it shall come to pass in what days? Last day. So this is the last day prophetic statement. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains. Now I wonder what mountains that is. That's mountains in California? There's a particular mountains he's talking about here. But watch, he'll explain in a second. And shall be exalted above the hills. And how many nations? All, All nations shall flow unto it. So there's some spot on this planet that Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from. And in that day, 
If this mountain of the Lord will be established, the Lord's house, and all nations will flow into it. It goes on to say, and many people shall come and go, shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of... Now, watch closely who said here, the God of who? Jacob. Now, notice didn't say the God of Esau. Because if it was the God of Esau, it would be the God of the Arabs. But it says the God of Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel. Remember when he was wrestling with the angel, and the angel says, no longer will you be called Jacob. From now on, you're going to be called Israel, Prince of God. Jacob's a supplanter and a cheater, and I'm going to change your name, and I'm going to change your character. But it says, they're going to go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. He shall teach us of his ways, and we shall walk in his past, for out of where? Zion. Zion. That's another name for Jerusalem. The mountain of the Lord shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Most didn't say from Sonora, didn't say Kansas City, didn't say New York, didn't say. It says they're not going to do it at the UN. This is going to happen in a particular city on the face of the planet. It's where the mountain of the Lord's house is. It's where Zion is. It's where God established His covenant. It's the city of Jerusalem. Now watch this. Very important. This, by the way, this hasn't happened yet. This has not happened yet. This is a prophecy. Next verse. And he shall what? Judge. Oh my, I didn't think God did that. He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And right in the middle of that verse, obviously they took the first part of that verse out because nobody wants to think that God judges people or rebukes people. Surely God wouldn't do that. But right in the middle of the verse, they didn't give it credit to put it in his own sentence structure. Right. It says, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares, their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they war learn war anymore. That whole last part of that verse is what's etched into that marble, or a grant, whatever it is. Now, let me just tell you something. You ain't going to get the first, the last part of that passage unless you get the first part. Amen. I got news for you. You can do all you want to. You ain't going to ever be in, see anybody beating swords and plowshares until he rules and reigns. Amen. The peacemaker does it. Yeah. This world's not going to know peace until the prince of peace comes and rules. It 